how are we meant to live day by day? Especially, how are our personalities meant to operate? That's the kind of subject we're discussing these days on this program. It forms the second step in a, a discussion that we started some eight or nine months ago. Uh, what is the meaning of life? Uh, why are we here? Uh, why do you exist? Uh, why am I in existence? And those of you who have followed the discussion know that we've come to the point where we agree that we are in existence because of the activity of a personal intellectual being who is responsible for the creation of the universe. Whether he created it by an evolutionary process or not, he still is the one that is responsible for the design and order that people like Einstein and ourselves have discovered in the universe. And we have concluded that his son who lived in the first century and showed us by the fully documented life that he lived, uh, that he is more than an ordinary human being, we have seen from his son that the reason we were created was to be friends of the maker of the world. That's why you were made. You were made to be a friend of the maker of the world. You were made to love him and for him to love you. That's why he made you. That's why he made us in his own image. Uh, with the same capacities as he has. That's why you have a personality that operates on three different levels. I mean, you operate on the physical level through your five senses. You operate on a psychological level through your mind and emotions and will. And you operate, or you can operate, on a spirit level, uh, which is the deepest part of your being, the part where the real you actually exists. And that part, of course, we've said several times, few of us seem to contact at all, except in moments of great crisis, where perhaps we look in desperation away from ourselves and away from the world around us, and we desperately grope around uh, to find if there's any real being out there at all. And it's in those moments that we come back often from such fishing expeditions with a real authentic sense and conviction that there is something there and that we have heard from someone beyond space. Even if we haven't heard it in voices or seen it in visions or all kinds of dreams, we've just sensed through the intuition of our spirits that we should do certain things. And we've done them, and often those things have become the basis of the whole direction of our lives. Many of us have come to moments of personal crisis, either financial or professional or domestic, when we have, in despair, turned from all that we can see in the world around us and from all that we can understand with our own minds and all that we can feel with our emotions, and we've desperately looked down into the depths we think it's of ourselves but it's actually into the depths of the spirit life that contacts the creator of the world. And at those moments, some of us have come up with revelations, it seems, or certainly deep convictions that have become the basis for the rest of the lives that we have lived. And so some of us have experience of that spirit level. But what we're talking about today is how those three levels of our personality were meant to operate. And what we have been saying, of course, is that most of us operate on the level of the body. That is, as if the body was the uppermost of those three levels. If you can think of uh, a page divided into three, you'd print body on the top space soul in the next space, soul being the psychological part of us, and spirit in the bottom space. And most of us live that way. We live from the body, dominating the soul, and crushing, of course, the spirit to death, so that we hardly have any awareness in our spirits at all, except for those of us who may have some kinds of experiences with spiritualists, or that whole world of the evil spirit realm where you are able to contact spirits that seem to imitate the dead 
and that whole realm that is uh, touched by Casey and others like him, that whole realm of uh, evil spirit world that deceives you by imitating the real spirit of God world, uh, some of us have contacted that, but most of us have no experience of spirit at all, either good or bad. Most of us simply live as if we have a body and a soul. Indeed, most of us probably live as if we have a body. And what I mentioned was that even those of us who do very cerebral work as university professors or as uh, uh, stock uh, brokers, uh, we often exist in our own personal lives purely on the level of our bodies, that is, on which wine we can get hold of for the dinner on Saturday night and whether we can go sailing on Sunday or not and whether we'll get a game of golf in maybe on Wednesday. Most of us exist on the level of uh, whether we can buy a bigger house or a better car or what kind of vacation we're going to have next summer. And so we live like little animals that uh, get our kicks out of whether the body feels better than it did last time or not, whether it feels rested or whether it doesn't feel rested. That is usually the level and the limit of our experience of life. Some of us do sink at moments into the level of the soul, that is the mind and emotions, and some of us do get some satisfaction from the operating of our minds, but usually for a very small portion of our lives. Most of us use most of our mind's ability to get more shelter, food and clothing for the old bodies, to keep them alive and to stay in a state of survival. Indeed, most of us use our minds simply to ensure that we'll be able to retire at the same level of physical comfort as we have at present. From time to time, we do delve into the emotions, of course, as you know so well. And uh, primarily there, again, we use our bodies to simulate our emotions so that we have uh, uh, feelings of elation because of the bodily uh, experience that we are having at that time, or at least uh, an experience of peace and rest through, again, the bodily relaxation or rest that we're experiencing. But most of us live on that level of the body dominating the soul. That, of course, wasn't meant to be the situation at all. The soul, the psychological part of us, is the part of us that makes us unique. We're not angels, that's, those are spirits. We're not animals, those are just bodies. We're human beings. We have souls. But the soul is there to as a, a natural instrument, uh, as a neutral instrument. The mind, you remember we've said several days ago, can actually defend what you choose to make it defend. It can find reasons for anything. So if you are a barrister and you decide this guy is uh, guilty, then you can find use your mind to find the reasons for supporting that uh, conclusion. Uh, similarly, if you decide he's guilty, uh, he's not guilty for some reason, you can find reasons that will support his acquittal. And so our mind and actually our emotions are pretty neutral instruments and need to be stimulated by something else. They can either be stimulated by the body or they can be stimulated by the spirit. Most of us, of course, live with them utterly dominated and enslaved by the body. And so the body uh, experiences tiredness and uh, we feel tired and we feel we can't do another moment of work and so we should go to bed. And we determine to go to bed purely on the basis of our physical feelings. It's the same when we are stimulated to action. Usually it's not because our mind has thought through the thing and decided it's the wise thing to do, but we are driven to action. Uh, many of us who uh, think of ourselves as very sophisticated and very cultured uh, find that we do all kinds of things simply to keep body and soul together. We get up in the morning and go out to work not because we have some high-minded desire to build something worthwhile or to leave the world a better place than we found it, but simply because if we don't, we'll have no money, and if we don't have no any money, we'll have no food, and we will not be able to do and see the things that we like doing and seeing. So it is surprising how many of us operate not on a high-minded, noble level of the soul, but on the level of the body driving the soul to certain actions that are necessary and essential. And so 
many of us operate our minds and emotions directly under the driving power of the body. Now, of course, it was not meant to be that way at all. So let's talk a little more tomorrow about how the soul was meant to operate.